and welcome to Profile Pod TV. I'm your host, Double A, here with the Social Nostra Network. Welcome back for another splendid episode of the podcast, man. Thank you so much for tuning in, wherever you're tuning in from. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on the audio platforms, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we got a great show in store for you tonight. And by the way, we are on... Um, Pandora podcast now that's a big deal now so in partnership with social Nostra so if you're an aspiring guest and you want to come on profile pod TV and you want to get a high level of exposure um, you've come to the right place we are on Pandora so we're really excited about that and uh, we're, we're making big moves here as, as we move along so um, we're, again um, let, hit me up on Instagram and uh, we'll work something out okay so tonight's show man we got a, a hip-hop artist extraordinaire okay um this gentleman hails from oxnard california but now residing in san diego california and i'm jealous man because i love san diego san diego is god's country it is a beautiful beautiful <laughs> area it yeah. is it's always beautiful there man it doesn't matter what part of the year it is winter time i don't even does winter exist in san diego <laughs> oh it's um, snowing right now it's been snowing and, out here dog exactly exactly it's been, man. It's, been it's been snowing it's crazy yeah yeah it, 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 um as you can see we have our guest here he's ready he's chomping at the bit all ready to go he's he just released <laughs> his album five months ago um it, it's called uh, act two and it's his debut album he is oh, it's, uh, it's not my debut it's not oh, my debut album okay that's my, no. that's, my that's my 10th album but thank you go ahead okay uh, and uh Okay, and so yeah, there. Thank you for clarifying that, my man. Yeah, and it's available on all streaming platforms now. He has his own podcast. He's the host of the MD Podcast. He's done some acting, and he's done so much more. And he's here to talk all about it, man. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome for the first time on Profile Pot TV, Mister Marlon D. What's up, Marlon? Yo, what's up, man? What up, Double A? Oh, man. What's up, man? Hey, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm so excited, man. There's so much to talk about with you, man, because I've been watching uh, all your stuff. Um, there's so much content to go through, man. I can't get to all of it, man. Uh, how's your day been, man? Uh, out there, down there in the snow in San Diego. <laughs> I'm trying to stay safe and trying to stay alive, bro. That's all we're trying to do in San Diego, man. Just trying to stay alive, trying to stay safe, trying to stay working, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, man, it's a, I feel so sorry for you, but living down there, man, gosh, you know, it's rough down those, win those winters are rough, man, it's like, uh, it's like Wisconsin down there, man. I love San Diego, by the way, shout out to all my folks in SD tuning in, you know. Oh, yeah, no doubt, man, no doubt, man, so you, you, you grew up in Oxnard, right? How, how long were you there in Oxnard? So I, I was born in the Philippines, but I didn't come to Oxnard until I was 10 years old. Um, I came in, I came to the country in 1995, so. You know, I grew up there, but I went to college in Cal State Fullerton. So I moved out when I was 18, went straight to college, Cal State Fullerton, spent five years in Orange County. When I graduated, moved back to Oxnard for one year. And then in 2010, I ended up moving to San Diego, you know. Okay. Oh, wow. I, so 1995, you came to the country, huh? Yeah. In the Philippines. And it, uh, okay. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. What? What uh, so you moved to Oxnard? You came straight to Oxnard from from uh, the Philippines? Yes, straight to the mm. Ox. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Awesome, man. So, man, I, I really let's get into the hip hop stuff, man. We'll get back to you know your 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 earlier years, man. Your your formative years. I really want to talk about hip hop with you, man, because I'm a big right. hip hop head, brother. I grew up yeah. listening to hip hop, man. Oh yeah, I, I love all genres of music, but I love love hip hop, man. I grew up in the '80s, bro. I was a kid in the 80s, you know, Beastie Boys, Ella Cool J, Grandmaster Flash, uh, Public Enemy, uh, you know, you, all those guys, man. So for me, uh, and then into the 90s, you know, I just watched hip hop evolve and I'm a fan of hip hop. Um, how did you get into to hip hop, man? How did you start hmm. um, rhyming? So my cousins, so when they came to the US in 1995, my cousins were DJs. So my cousins de definitely introduced me to the to the records, you know, like, and of course, you know, growing up in Oxnard, California, there was two hip hop stations that we can listen to. It's Q1047, and we can still listen to um, Power 106 growing up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, MTV, BET, Source, The Source Magazine, 1995. I'm fresh from the Philippines, you know what I'm saying? So I'm kind of a culture shop too in the US, but 
like I've been hearing hip hop in, in the Philippines, like Tone Lo, Vanilla Ice, Criss Cross, House of Pain. Like they were playing that in the Philippines growing up, but till it wasn't until um I came to the U.S. when I when I got introduced to my cousins and they really showed me the culture and you know my moms couldn't really afford the turntables so I had to rely on my imagination to like to like I had at first I started out like mimicking my favorite rappers like Snoop the Brat corrupt from the dog pound you know oh um, I started just mimicking them and just st- I started to like copy what they're saying first like memorizing their songs and then I would say around fourth grade fifth grade. I'd be attempting to write my own, but copying their style though. So it's like, it started off with me copying my, my, my idol styles. But as I got into high school, you know, still getting into like raucous records, most deaf, talent quality, dilated. Like, I feel like my elementary years were spent on like idolizing everything that death row records did, you know? But like sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I started getting into like the other side of things like Wu Tang, Tribe, Red Man, Method Man, uh, you know, like Buster, you know, like everything, dog. Yeah. I'm, I'm 30, I'm 36. I'm from the 90s, man. So anything you can think of, I was on that shit, dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. So you came in like, I mean, you moved here literally. Uh, at the height, I mean, uh, the arguably peak. the height and the peak of, I mean, you, had, nah. like you said, uh, P, you know, Tupac, Wu Tang, uh, you know, Snoop, uh, Biggie, Biggie, the- Jay Z, Nas, Eminem, Dog Pound, like the Dog Pound. I don't, I don't even think people understand like the influence of corrupt man. I can't even. I'm a student of the game, dog. I'm a fan first. Forget all this rap shit, man. I, I'm uh-huh. a fan first, dog. Always gonna be a fan first. Yeah. Oh, speaking of corrupt, uh, just a little side note there. I was uh, watching something on, um, I forget what podcast it was in. It was, uh, I, I was scrolling through and I, I was on IG and he was on with, um, uh, Daz and, and uh, he, there were, there were guests on somebody else's podcast. Uh, and they were talking about versus, you know, the, you know, the, the, the show versus where they, you know, they compete. Yeah. Quote, they want to go compete. against go yeah, they, method man. Right, yo, you saw that, okay? Yeah, they were calling out. Uh, who was it, Method Man and uh, who Red was and it? Meth. Red, Red and Meth. Red and Meth, yeah. Red and Meth, yeah. You know? I want yeah, to was... see that, man. That thing's gonna be a good one, man. Yeah, no doubt, man. Those, yeah, corrupt and Daz, man. The dog pan, those guys are super underrated, underrated legendary, man. man. Like, there's no Snoop or Death Row without them too. Like, I opened for the dog pan once in 2016 in San Diego, and that was one of the highlights too of my career, man. Just seeing, just seeing corrupt and das up front, man. I was like, oh my god, the dog, dog food that mm. raised me. Like that album raised me, dog. Dog yeah. food. No, no doubt, man. You know, and immediately I was like, man, I gotta go. I'm, I wanted to go on YouTube I, and just bring up dog, dog food, the, the, the album, and go check it out. But I was uh, sidetracked. But anyways, man. But so you, so the '90s were very influential for you, and, and as far as hip hop. Um, so when did you actually start? You know, did you start writing first? Did you start yeah. um, just emceeing, freestyling? Tell us a little bit about that. I'm going to be honest, man. I've been writing rhymes since I was 10 years old, you know? But, like, as far as, like, saying it out loud in front of people, I didn't start doing it till freshman year in high school. I was in the hip-hop group in high school called Salty Peanuts. <laughs> it was me. It was me and four of my homies back in high school. And um, I started with them, like throughout the whole high school, all the way to like my freshman year of college. I was in the, I was in the group and like um, started freestyling, battling at lunchtime or even performing at the high school rallies, performing at the church events or backyard parties all across Oxnard, just like grabbing the mic and freestyling any chance I can in high school or freestyling in high school lunchtime, lunch rallies, you know, just any Anytime I can get the mic, I try to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just no doubt. Young, just a young kid, though. You know, just. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. No. It, it, so, were you kind of um, experimenting with your style at first, or did you know like what kind of MC you wanted to be become right off the bat, man? What yeah. were you shy as well? Were you kind of bashful? Or tell tell yeah. us about those initial stages, man. Were you confident right off the bat? You know. Shit, I'm still trying to find my style now at 36. Now I'm just kidding. 
No, nah, but it's a real talk though. Like at 36, I'm still experimenting with different styles. So I think like when I was in my high school years, it was just formative years of like listening to Nas, Eminem, you know, like just listening to that shit, just being influenced by them was like such a big deal. But I felt like as the years went on, I started making my solo albums and solo mixtapes. Um, I started like, just defining my own style not just my style of how i rap but what i rap about you know what i'm saying like yeah i just started you know the more the more years you put behind this you're gonna find your voice but you have to keep doing it you know what i'm saying you yeah. can't stop you can't do it every once every three four years it doesn't work like that you have to like it's it's non-stop you have to keep doing it i don't know you know what i'm saying like if you stop you're gonna fall off and if you fall off, you got to do a lot to get back up there again, you know? Absolutely, man. So c- consistency is the key, right? Yeah. Consistency. Yeah. I think in, I think in any form of art, man, you know, that's, it's, it's so true in the podcast game as well, man. You, you know, you're a podcaster, you know, uh, you know, if you, if you don't do a podcast for two, three weeks, man, <laughs> you get left behind, people forget about you and, and all that. But so, yeah, that, so I think uh, that, that that's important, man, right? That's always yeah. important, the consistency. Um, so it, when did you really start to, um, you know, get a grasp on on, on what you wanted to do as, as an MC, man? When did it really start to click for you? Well, my first album came out in 2006. I was a third year in college, Cal State Fullerton. Um, I'm not saying, well, I'm not sure what clicked, but I definitely, that was my first attempt in, in dropping solo albums. And ever since every year, since 2006, man, if I didn't drop an album, I dropped a mixtape. So um, I don't know. It's still it's still clicking. I'm still learning about myself as an artist, bro. This this industry is constantly changing. So it's I'm, I'm constantly trying to adapt, bro. It's, it's not done. You know what I'm saying? Like I've done some work, but I'm not done. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You feel like you're still. Uh, like you said, you're still learning. You're still honing your craft. It's a never-ending process, I think, right? Act uh, two is my tenth album, man. That's album number ten. Gosh, not man. not counting not counting the mixtapes. That's not even counting the mixtapes. That's just the albums. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I was 36 when that came out, August 2020. It meant a lot to me to finish it and release it during the pandemic. And um. I dropped the mixtape every two months for the pandemic. Ever since the pandemic started, I dropped the mixtape every two months and the album. You know what I'm saying? So wow. I so tried were... to really, you know, keep it moving for 2020, you know? <clears throat> no doubt. No doubt, man. Yeah. They, they, you were, so you were in the studio a lot. I imagine. I was, man. I spent a lot of time in the lab, got about a hundred songs done. The best 20, that's what made Act Two. And the other 80, I scattered it around in different projects for 2020. Mm-hmm. And that was my way of like practicing to get back on it again. It's like, it's like getting back on the bicycle. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you haven't, if you haven't rode it in a while, you got to get back on that shit. Cause like, I would say my ninth album came out 2017 at around 2018, May, 2018. I just got sick of the industry and I just started pursuing acting. So mm-hmm. I did theater. I did some indie films, short films, but the whole time I was doing films and the whole time I was doing theater, I was going straight to the studio, you know? I just took a break from doing shows, but as far as the studio, I never stopped going, so... Um, I'm, we'll just get into it. I'm just a workaholic, man. Just, That's great, man. I'm just a workaholic. Yeah, we'll get into your acting stuff in a little bit, man. And But yeah, I want to talk about uh, Act 2, your 10th your yeah. album, right? What? Um, so you, you dropped the album in, was it August or October? August 2020. I dropped it on the day of my birthday, August 6th. Oh, <laughs> okay. okay. I, turned thir- I, I turned 36 the day I dropped it. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. So that, that was pretty cool, man. And was that coincidence or that was no, purposely- I, I I wanted to do it like that. I just wanted to, I wanted to complete something before I turned 36. I just it meant a lot to me to just finish it during 2022. It was, I'm proud of that moment, man. Yeah, no doubt, man. No doubt. Yeah, Act Two, man. It's uh, it's got twenty tracks on there, available now on all the streaming platforms. Um, yeah, let's talk about Act Two, man. What? Why did you name it Act Two? What's the significance behind the title? Yeah, man. It's just number ten, album number ten. It just meant a lot to me. I felt like it's a beginning 
beginning of a new era, next chapter in my, my life as an artist. Um, and I was doing acting. So I think the whole theater metaphorical mm-hmm. analogies kind of worked out too. And um, um, act two, I also felt like mankind and American society is turning to a different point. It's a turning, we're, we're turning a different corner this this year. And, uh, I, and I think 2020 shaped the U.S., and the albums dedicated to um, dedicated to what Americans are going through, what I'm going through, politically, spiritually, um, and what we're going through, man. Like, I can say so much more about the album, but I, I hope people interpret it the way they interpret it. You know, like, I I try to uh, be as honest as much as I can. You know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt, man. No doubt. The, 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 and that's, I think you released the single uh, change is going to come. Yeah. Right. So now you, as I hear you describe the album, man, it, it, now I see that, that the song has more, um, it makes more sense to me why, why you named it, you know, change is going to come, why you released it uh, as the, the, that was the debut single from the album. Right. Yeah. Cause it, a change is going to come. You're right, man. And, so let's talk about changes. Let's talk about this single, man. Uh, you shot the video. It's on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And and by the way, I love that video, man. Where where did you guys shoot that um, that scene where where there's all got you got all the hubcaps behind you, all the rims uh, stacked on top of each other. I love that in, scene, man. Thank you. We shot that in Escondido. Shout out to Ricardo Romero and Jonathan Nadal helping me direct and co-direct and just helping us, helping me out, helping me out with the visuals, man. Thank you guys. Yeah, 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 I posted that video clip uh, on my page, and it got a lot of a great, great response, man. For uh, us, almost two hundred views there, and that's, uh, that's awesome. Thanks, man. guys. Everybody tuning in, I love y'all. Thank you, seriously, it means a lot, man. Yeah, no doubt. Got a lot of comments and stuff, man. A lot of good feedback, but I'm sure you're used to that already, brother. <laughs> oh man, it's humbling. It's humbling every time uh, someone shows love, man. It really is, man. I, I feel you. No, it's uh, when someone uh, appreciates your art, man. It's it, it really means a lot, man. And it's humbling. It's humbling. No doubt, no doubt, man. Yeah, and you said it was directed by Ricardo Romero. Shout out, and um, who um, who produced uh, uh, the song? So it was pr- co-produced by me, my homie Hash Beats. Um, Hash Beats and I, we pretty much did about nine songs out of the twenty. And the other okay. joints was produced by the other songs from the album was produced by Amber Sequins, DJ Space, Clutch from Oxnard, and I don't want to miss names, but you know Savage on the Beats. Uh, I just don't want to miss names, you know. But <laughs> it's 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 a collective of just a, a tight knit, like just. I keep my production team nice and small, but everybody's really bringing it, man. Like, I don't need a whole lot of production team behind me. Just, just a few cats, man. Just a few cats. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they've been lacing me for years, bro. They've been lacing me for years. Like, no, no. When I hear your album, Marlon, I I think, uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm a big hip hop fan, man. I, I love the beats. I love the production. I love the lyrics. I love everything about it, man. And, uh yeah it just it's a really well well done album man um i think if we were in the the in the cd days it would have been a probably a yeah. double cd right <laughs> double cd release. yeah 20 joints you know a lot mm-hmm. of people tell me a lot of people tell me like yo 20 songs too much people got adhd don't put out too much but i disagree with that man i feel like us independent us indie artists we got to put out more man we got more to prove we got more to feed out there we got we just got more to prove. We we need to give them a lot because there's a lot to prove. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. Hey, give I mean- give them a variety. Give them a variety. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I feel like when people say, "No, nah, you just need to drop 12 songs or 11 songs," I also feel like it's a sign of your laziness. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe you just want to <laughs> drop. I don't know. That's just me. Like, maybe. You just want to keep dropping 11 songs because that's all you can make. You can only make 11 songs. But I feel like if you have a lot more to say than 11 songs, then fucking make that shit, man. Like, like if you got a lot more to say, keep making songs. And that's your album. If you feel like 11 songs gets it across, then 11 songs it is. But if you got more to say, man, anybody out there doing this, yo, young MCs, listen to me. Don't listen to anybody saying you got to drop 10 songs. They're lying. Listen to your heart. 
If you like, you got to drop 25, drop that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, you're done. Hey, it's, it's your album. It's your, your, you're the creator of the, of your album, of your art. And like you said, man, you do what's in your heart, do what you need to do to convey your message and if, how you see fit. Right, Marlon? Yeah, man. You got you to gotta do what's in your heart, yo. No doubt, man. No doubt. So, so with Act 2, man, how, do, how long did it take to produce the album, man, from beginning to end? I, I was starting to record in 2019, like around the time. I can't pinpoint when Nipsey Hussle died, but around the time Nipsey Hussle died, that's when I started, you know? And mm -hmm. I finished it around, I would say I finished the album around June, June 2020. And from June to August, I just I just planned my marketing promo rollout, and it came out in uh, August six. Yeah, man. Okay. So so a little about uh, give or take a year, a few uh, maybe you know give uh, or take a few months. Yeah, I don't know year. when Nipsey Hussle died, but whenever yeah. he died, like gotcha. that weekend, I just there was something about Nipsey Hussle's death that like I don't know, man. It just woke me up, like. It just woke me up, bro. It's too short. Was was that the inspiration for this album? Is that was that what just sparked you? Not just Nipsey Hussle's death. Um, I had a couple mm -hmm. of close homies. I had a close couple homebo homeboys in San Diego that died, and a couple of family members that was dying throughout the years. And you know, a lot of people are still dying now. So mm -hmm. when you listen to the album, I talk about I talk about death a lot. Um, not on the suicide tip, but I just talk about death. I talk about legacy because I feel like mm. at the end of the day, dude, when you die, if I die, people, all, all people got is bad memories or good memories. Mm. And there's no going to be both. We're going to, there's going to be both. There's going to be bad memories of us and good memories. And we got to even it out a little bit and make it more good. You know? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I was, gonna, I was about to say, I, I would like to make it more good, man. More than any, obviously, you know. Time yeah. is limited, so you know. Yeah, no doubt, Marlon. No doubt. So, man, uh, with, so with Act Two, uh, the um, what what are what are some of the what are some of the great uh, what what's the greatest compliment you've received thus far as far as the, you know from about Act Two, man? A lot of people really like Track One when um, the album starts out with me in the therapy session. Um, a lot of I was surprised how many people was really touched, like. A lot of the homies hit me up about that. And I think I think it spoke to people because I think mental health and sanity means more than ever in 2021. And mm -hmm. we got to take care of our sanity and we got to take care of mental health. To me, man, it's more important than money. You know what I'm saying? No it's doubt, more, man. It's more important than like prestige or status or what job you got or, you know, like all we got is your mental health, bro. Yeah, no doubt, man. It's I mean, if you don't have mental health and uh, I think uh, everything it just trickles down from there, you know, it's going to affect and spill over into every area of your life and affect you negatively, man. Probably you know, exactly more, you know, adversely. And uh, yeah, I, I think mental wellness, like you said, mental health more than ever. I, I took a conscientious effort. And, and and focusing on my own mental wellness and and doing things you know like meditation and and um you know affirmations and, and positive thinking and just you know really really taking initiative and um hitting it hard you know harder than ever my whole life man you know i'm 44 years old and um man, am i 44 yeah I'm 44. <laughs> you start getting up there you start like, like am I, yeah yeah second guessing yourself uh, but yeah, more now more than ever, man. Yeah, it's I really took initiative and um, took action, took action on it because with my it's personally, my uh, you know I've always kind of battled with with um, you know negative thoughts and, and negative self talk and stuff like that. Uh, but anyways, but but yeah, man, it, you're right, Marlon. You're right now more than ever. Um, it, that's an important thing. But it's it's uh, interesting to see that your that first track and that, it's the opening track. It's the opening song. Yeah, when people listen to the opening song, the opening track, it starts out with me in a therapy session with a the therapist. And um, it, when you listen to it, it, it just, I think, I think it touched the nerve. It, it struck a nerve with people, you know, and, and that's my goal, man. Like, I just want to speak the truth, my truth, what really happens to me, what has happened to me, what I've seen, and hopefully people connect, you know, and um, 
I can't make everybody like my music, but I'm only focusing on those who do, you know? So no I doubt. dedicate all my albums to those who do, you know? Of course, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're not going to please everybody, right? I think... Um, I can't, man. I uh, tried doing that. It's impossible, man. No I doubt. Can't. Exactly. So I'm only here for those who fuck with me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, man. So I like um Sunny Days, man. That tra- that's a good oh, track, man. You, man. No thank doubt, you. man. And, and talk to, talk about the, the Boom Boom Room. Uh, can, can I clarify <laughs> that because you know the title of that song for me, you know, uh, evokes a, a certain thing. You know, and uh, clarify what's that song all about, man? I'm a big fan of Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence, and back in the day, they had a movie called Life. And yeah. remember when you were watching that movie, they had an imaginary club called the Boom Boom. Like Eddie Murphy was oh. making up this this imaginary club in his head called the Boom Boom Room. <laughs> and when I heard the beat, it, it's a Miles Davis sample, and um, it just sounds like something from the fifties, from the forties, fifties, like that swing, you know. And um, I thought about that scenery in um, in Eddie Murphy's film Life. I just called it the Boom Boom Room because like. It had that jazz vibe. Dun, 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 yeah, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 Love dun, that. Love dun, that. Dun, 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 dun. You know what I'm saying? Like very cool, man. Every yeah, now and then we got right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That was produced by Ambush Sequence from Seattle. Um, somebody from Seattle help, helping produce like five of these songs from the album. So I'm just grateful for the help that I get from people, man. Absolutely. You said ambush sequence. Yes, yes. Shouts to, Amb- shouts to ambush sequence. He's somebody that I met on tour while I was on the road in Arizona, and we've been building since for the past six, seven years. He's been producing for the last two, three albums, and um, yeah, man, like that. Those longtime connections. I still, I still got it, and I'm, I'm just thankful, bro, that I'm still here alive making music, man. You know. Yeah, no doubt, man. It, it's a it's a beautiful thing, man. Uh, making music, I, you know, I always say, um, I mean, I love music. I come from a musical family, Marlon. Uh, I only played an instrument, you know. I played the trombone for a couple of years. Good shit. Good but yeah, shit. It, in fifth and sixth grade, and I always regret uh, quitting. But uh, you know, I, I grew up as a playing ball. You know, I was an athlete growing up, man. So, you know, either you're going to be an athlete or you're going to be something else, you know, a scholar or you're going to be an artist. Uh, so, I, you know, I was the athlete. But but uh, yeah, it, it, do you play any instruments? I do not. I do not play any instruments, man. Um, but I, did, I, I can beatbox a little bit. <laughs> um, but I was really hands on with the production for this album. Um, I picked out the samples myself. I told the homies to flip it my way. But when, when it came to me and Hash, we were in the studio in South SD. You know, we were the ones banging it out. I, I got a chance to like program some of the drums and really pick out the type of snares and kicks I want and where the loop ends, where the loop starts. And I had more say in like the production, just how, how the, you know, I just, I was really hands on with the production. And that's the first, you know, I mean, I mean, it's my 10th album. So, I'm always used to like picking my own beats. So I have control in that sense, but I got a little bit more, um, I got a little bit more, I'm a perfectionist, bro. Like I just wanted to be perfect. (laughs) No, no, you gotta be, man. I think you you have to be. And you know, it's interesting, even when you're a perfectionist, even after everything's done, right? You always look back and you you listen to it or you want, whatever it is, if you're making a, a CD, um, you know, if you're producing an album, if you're making a movie, or if you're doing a podcast, you always find, you know, nothing, it is, it's never good enough, right? It's never good enough. The finished product, and you, you always look back at it and you say, man, I could have done that differently. Or why didn't I do it this like that or whatever? And um, it's a good thing. You know, are, are you, do just, you come across that? Yeah, I'm all, bro, bro, since day one, I'm still like that now. And I just think it shows that you care. I think that means you care about what you put out. And I, I love paying attention to detail. I mean, you got to pay attention to detail. And that's what makes a classic album. You know, you got to pay attention to detail, man. Like, Yes. I don't give a fuck how, how long it's going to take for us to get the mix right. If the mix is not ready, if the mix is not done, I'm not putting it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
It has to sound perfect in my ears until we put it out, before we put it out. And um, all my engineers know that they get into arguments with me, but it's only because I want I want the perfect album, you know. But but even with that being said, bro, maybe I'll never get it perfect. But that's the key of life. Like, I don't think I'll ever make the perfect album. But the thing is, I keep trying, you know, like, like I keep trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? What makes a perfect album? I'm gonna get there, though. You know what I mean? I, I think you're. I mean, man. I'm gonna get. There. I think Act Two's. I love Act Two, by the way. No doubt. No, be, that's. Go I don't ahead. Want to be too hard on myself? I felt like Act Two's. I like it. I love you're pro- it. You're proud of it. Right? What, <laughs> what are you most uh, bless you, man? Bless. Thank you. What are you most proud about uh, Act Two, man? I really love the production, man, from top one to top 20. And a lot of people say, like, that's too much songs. I'm like, no, it's not. Because every time I listen to it, I feel like each song meant something. And um, I don't hear it. Now, maybe I, I sound a little biased as me, but I don't hear any f- album fillers. I feel uh-huh. like each song can easily be the first single. And that's oh, the goal. I see. And that's the goal, you know? I just want each song to be is, easily can be pushed as the first single. And that's my goal, you know what I mean? Absolutely, man. No, that's great. You could you could release 20 singles, huh? I want to, you know, that's the goal, you know? And I'm not trying to be, like, sounding cocky or nothing, but um, it's like, as I grow older, man, like, I know what I'm capable of, and I know my worth, man. I'm an underground MC. I never got that mainstream success yet, but I feel like the groundwork that I've built and the foundation for me being in the underground, I feel like, how do I say this, man? Like, there's no shortcuts to this. If you did take a shortcut, it's going to show. But if you yeah. took, if, if, you, if you blew up and you took shortcuts, it's going to show. You blew up, don't get me wrong. You have, million, you have millions and you're, you're out and you're famous, famous. But it's gonna show if you took shortcuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, if you if you didn't take a shortcut and you really built this brick by brick, step by step, guess what, fool? It's also gonna show. Yeah. Gonna it shows. Solid. It shows who's seasoned, and it shows who's not. <laughs> Definitely, man. Definitely, you know. Yeah. If you, you like, you say if you build it brick by brick, you're gonna build a solid foundation, and it's like you said, it's gonna show. It's gonna, gonna show, you know, uh, whether or not you, yeah, you hit it on the head. You summed it up, man. You, you take shortcuts, it's gonna show. And for MCs, better, man, for better or worse, to all my MCs out there listening, man, it's good to be confident in yourself when it's time to show it. You know what I'm saying? When it's time to show and prove, when it's time to show and prove, that's when that's when you show and prove, man. You know, yeah. when it's not time to show and prove, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> but. but but when it is time to show and prove, you got to deliver. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. You know? Uh-huh. No doubt. No doubt, Marlon. So what's the most enjoyable part for you, Marlon, as an MC, man? What do you love so much about, you know, rhyming and being an MC in, in the hip-hop game? I've been doing it. I've been dropping albums nonstop and just doing shows nonstop since I was 21. And I'm 36 now, you know, for damn near 15 years. So yeah. I've been fortunate enough and be privileged to open up for some of the greatest underground legends and even mainstream legends that I was a fan of, man. Like I got a chance to open up for Guru from Gangstar, bro, before he died. Oh wow. And um when was that? Ch- uh my first Let's talk album, about a little bit. Oh six, two thousand six. When my first album came out, I gave him a copy of my first album. You know what I'm saying? Um Wow, how did I, you meet him? Uh, I opened up for him in Normandy Casino and he was backstage with a bunch of girls, you know, just, um, we just, we talked, we spoke. I said, Hey, my name's Marlon, Marlon D. I opened up for you, Guru. I'm a, I'm a big fan. And he goes, Oh, good looking out. Good looking out. And then I go, yo, my first album just came out. I want to give it to you. Oh, thank you. He, he grabbed it, put it in his pocket. And then just a bunch of girls was just around him. So I, <laughs> I, I, I fell back, you know, like I, I did my piece, dapped him up and I fell back, you know? Yeah, yeah, Normandy Casino down in um, uh, Gardena, right? Yeah, man, I opened for fucking Guru. 
Very cool, man. And Very Sean cool. Price. I've opened up for Dilated Peoples, Slum okay. Village, Pete Rock, Scarface, Devin the Dude, The Dog Pound. Man, I can go on and on, bro. I can go The Alcoholics, The Visionaries, Brother. Wow. Every man, like Keith Murray, uh, Alzai, like just okay, a lot, man. A lot. Yeah, I, I look, impressive list, man. Master Ace. AG from AG and Showbiz. I've opened up for Rap and Forte. <laughs> yeah. Can't keep, can't keep going. I've opened up for um, Fat Lib from the Far Side. Uh-huh. Um, I opened up for um, Below uh, Styles of Beyond. Just unbelievable, man. That's pretty cool. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great list, man. I think. Uh, Bro, and, I opened and- up for Scarface. Wow, yeah. Yeah, dog, he's, he's I opened big. up for Scarface, dog. What? Yeah. Talk, Scarface? talk to us about that that experience. Where where was that one at? It was at La Luz Ultra Lounge in Chula Vista, um, back in maybe 2016, 2016, something like that. Not too long ago then. Uh, Devin the dude, I opened for Devin the dude twice. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, I opened for all members of Dilated Peoples, but not Dilated the group. But all three members is a solo, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, man. Very cool. So, yeah. But I, that's one aspect. And the other aspect I like is, like, you know, I just love hip-hop. And it makes me happy. And I love making music. There's a lot of bullshit in the music industry. I hate that part. But the actual act of recording, performing, and writing music, I love that part. But the business, the bullshit, the shadiness, the cutthroats, people, you know, people, I don't even want to get into that right now, bro. No, that's, that's, a, that's a different topic. That's a different uh, episode. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> no, no doubt, man. It's it, when you get down to the art, you know, the art form part of it, man. And it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah, it really is, man. And hip hop is huge all over the world. I mean, you go to every country. I mean, in every country, man, there's a rapper. You know, there's people are rapping in, in Eastern Europe, you know, people are rapping <laughs> in, in Africa, you know, it's, it's crazy, man. It's, it's becoming crazy. worldwide. It's worldwide, man. It really is. The culture is unbelievable, man. From where it's, you know, from where it's come and, and um, what it's become now, it's just it's so, yeah, you can't even describe it, man. You know, it's, it's really, but it's awesome to see that, you know, we, you see someone rapping in like, for example, uh, in, in French, right. Or, um, gosh, in, in, uh, you know, in, in, in Serbia, you know, there's P- Serbian rappers, you know, it's, it's super cool, man, to see that stuff, man. Yeah. Know if, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, Hey, Hey man, and what, what are, what are some, uh, some goals? I mean, what, what's the next step for you as an MC, man? So right now, um, you know, they canceled all the shows for 2020 and 2021, so after the album was done, I found time to um, start my own podcast. My podcast is called MD Podcast. And of course, it's hip hop commentary. Of course, you know, I'm, of course, I'm interviewing rappers, producers, artists, and everybody creative, you know, anybody creative that's doing their thing consistent, I interview them. But I also reserved the spot for my mental health advocates, you know, those who are working with kids with autism those in the social work field, mental health field, Reiki healing, psychotherapists, you know, teachers. I'm also interviewing them for the podcast because I feel like America is going through a change and transition and and it's it's a a different country now. And I feel like if there's any year to tell her story, I feel like this is it. And um, as far as the music, I got an album coming out with Joey Dixon. Um, Actually, it's an EP. Um, it should be out by springtime of 2021. Uh, all beats produced by him, except one joint produced by my homie, Willie Guts. And I want to spend 2021 creating. And I'm going to drop one project, which is the, my, my album with Joey Dixon called 13th and Broadway. But for 2022, uh, that will be the release of my 11th solo album. But Ooh. I'm spending... Yeah, but I'm spending the whole 2021 making that, you know, so I'm not in the rush. 
My album barely came out five months ago. I'm not in the real rush. I gotta, I gotta take my time and make it, make it. My if it has to top Act Two. If it's not top, if it's not topping Act Two, I'm not putting it out. So I have to, top, I have to top the last album. You know. Wow, man, you got to ante up now, bro, because that's a that's a tall task. You know, Act Two is pretty impressive so thank you bro thank i appreciate that of course man no of course and and wow that's that's quite quite a task right you got your work cut out for you bro but you know hey man you set the bar high you gotta sit like you said you're a perfect you're a perfectionist and if you weren't trying to better yourself uh, then what's the point right i think production wise it's definitely going to be a challenge to um and maybe let me rephrase it maybe not necessarily top it but definitely it can't sound the same like act two. That's for sure. It has to sound different from act two. Um, and concept wise, I think I got to rap about something different and it can't be the same shit as act two. But in order for me to do that, bro, like I got to live life a little bit. Got to live life a little bit. Life has to happen. So I got new things to write and rap about. And um, yeah, man. No doubt. I got to just live a little bit, bro got to bro you're only human man we're only i'm gonna get i'm gonna get there though for sure we all are man hey marlon man i'm right now at this time i'd like to um i know we i know we kind of talked about doing it at the end but i think i I, i'd like to have you spit some bars show some of your showcase some of those uh skills right here um if you want to freestyle if you want to do a little something Yo, stage is Mr. Officer, we add an order. I can give a fuck about the next drum supporter. Often cough and smoke, but can slump and awkward. And it be that it's hard for this about to get slaughtered. Raucous records, the air from the way we was brought up. Caught up in this hip hop shit with slave. These sponsors paved the way for a blazing trail. I hate these sponsors. I still got a message for your sons and daughters. Oh, wait a minute, please stop. The press has dropped the knowledge and cast it. The cops going to test this. And he's coming back. All you rap contestants better stretch a couple laps, yo. I'm just flexing on the beat like Hot 97 is crazy. Everybody wants to act like fuck you. Pain me. the game stays shady. What else is you? I'm just fucking with you because I got nothing to do. I'm an off night setting it off right. Bust the game wide open like exhaust pipes. The man in the myth on the mic. I'm the raw type. Rocking the crowd, all black or all white. Against all races, gotta fuck with my kin folks. Deliver every bar like I'm making a sick joke. My whole fucking life's up and down the bin broke. Sleeping on the cash, got paid. The shit's dope. The way you manifested all my dreams, they still hate to give you daps and hugs, but the love is still fake. It's all part of the game. I don't know how to explain it. Some rappers never made it. Pursued other forms of entertainment in the building. Grab the mic and I'm still nice. I survived pain and betrayal. It's real life. I wouldn't change a thing. I just got to be built twice. Let me just address the situation I must do. You and I know that the props is just due. I always wonder why human beings are hateful, acting all green when they know the plate's full. Mama told uh, me to take a trip. Oh, uh, keep going. Hang on. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Th- no, oh, good. man. Nice. <laughs> Mama told me to take a trip to the corn store. I came back with the 40, maybe 40 more stories in my head. Nowadays, I'm all scatterbrain. The main goal is to make sure real rap remains. They caught a little fame nowadays to act strange. I used to act the same, man. I was acting lame. But life rearranged and the seasons changed and the facial perish, but then the real remains. I got this shit did it in my heart. That's the real skill. I got to grind it out. I don't want to ill will upon any brother on the hustle like me. This is a huge price to pay. I don't hustle for free. We got to reap what we sow and it's time for us to harvest. Got to grind it out. Who could push the farthest? Who could think the smartest? Treat it like a chess piece. You could charge it to the game like chat. Please never been to Bally's and I never rode jet skis. Got to hustle with yak. I got to get cheese. I keep mine for the love, for the art form. I took a break, but I rest back the platform. Nice, man. Ah, wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Marlon D, man. Yeah. Wow. Nice, nice. Uh, that was that. Uh, that was one hundred percent freestyle, right? That's some songs off the album. You know, yeah, I just wanted to I promote know. it. You know, <laughs> nice man. That's uh, very impressive, brother. I see why. I mean, that's fifty. Geez. But I can bust a freestyle live on Zoom. What up to double A every time I zoom on the interview, every time I ridicule, it's like that. MC Marlon D gets lyrical. Yo, check it like a submarine vessel. We fucked up last night we had to reschedule yo it's all good we couldn't connect it's all good though double a much love and respect from ox all the way to sd to la i freestyle all the time all day in the hallway because i'd be rapping always matter of fact do it four ways <laughs> nah. yo yo marlon d what's it no i'm just kidding man. 
<laughs> ah man no that's awesome bro thank you thank you for for giving us some of the some of the skills man i appreciate that bro um i want to kind of talk about your podcast a little bit man let's shifting gears yeah. a little bit now uh you got into the podcast game when my first episode came out in october i am now on season two but all in all from season one to season two i've got about 27 episodes out you, you said october yeah I've got about oh, 27 wow. episodes out, you know. Um, I'm really thankful for everyone that's granted me the interview. And I got a chance to practice my journalism skills and really bring, bring people's stories out. I feel like some people's stories deserve to be heard, man. Oh, no doubt. I think everybody has a story to tell, Marlon. You know, oh, I, yeah, bro. Everyone has a story to tell. and well, You know so I got to get you on. You know I got to get you on, right? Let me know, man. Uh, just say the word, brother, and I'm there, all man. Right. Let's build. Let, let, I'm gonna when we get off. I'm gonna let's 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 talk about it. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, man. No, it's a. I'm. I'll be there, man. Um. So what? 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 You mentioned it earlier, but uh, what inspired you to start the podcast, man? So I think like just the pandemic. It was too much time in my hands, and I felt like I gotta use something. I gotta do something productive, man. Like. I needed to do something productive besides making music. The album was already done. There's no shows. I shot the video. I felt like in order for me, because besides me starting a podcast, I was fortunate enough to get on other people's podcasts as an artist when they interviewed me for the album. So I was doing a lot of that too. So I just think that the Filipino American experience, like the Filipino American perspective Filipino artists, Filipino business owners, Filipino rappers. I just think like there's not a lot of us, dog. And, um, <laughs> and um, I can I can count on one hand how many Filipinos out here are doing hip hop. But that but the podcast is not just about hip hop, and it ain't just about Filipinos. It's 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 about all of us, man. And like I hate to say it's a hip hop podcast because it's not. It's <laughs> it's it's. It's everything, son. And it just happens that it's a rapper hosting it. So, of course, we're going to add some flavor to this, you know. But right. But I'm inspired by people. I'm inspired by people's stories. And I'm inspired by consistency. One thing in common that my guests have, they're consistent in something, you know. No they, they, they stayed doing something and didn't stop. That's one thing that they all have in common. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I your uh our podcasts are very similar in, in concept and, and theme you know we want to bring on individuals who are inspirational who are motivational who are, who are gonna you know influence the audience and and to maybe you know doing something that they've never done for example you know like yourself man maybe there's a young you know teenager who's always wanted to become a rapper uh and he doesn't know he or she don't know how to kind of take take the initiative you know or you know, so that's just an example, but yeah, man, that's great that you're doing that, man. What, what, are, what is, what are some things that you really enjoy about the podcast, man? You know, I'm really interested in about healing. I'm really interested in like healing trauma and going through generational curses and breaking generational trauma and what people got to do to overcome trauma. And I feel like a lot of us never did that. And a lot of us try to numb the pain with drugs, alcohol, sex, money yeah. fame but i feel like a lot of us adults were still little kids in adults bodies and a lot of us never got a chance to really deal with our trauma and that's why we're fucked up the way we are and and don't take it from me motherfuckers i'm fucked up look me i'm i'm <laughs> i'm interested in trauma because i'm traumatized bro you know like so i i'm i feel like i'm representing all my people's to talk about shit that they don't want to talk about but it's there you know what i'm saying and like i'm not the first hip-hop artist advocating for mental health but all i know is that it's becoming more accepted in hip-hop to talk about this and i'm not trying to ride no wave i'm just saying like bro we cut we we're all struggling with something you know what i'm saying so i feel like doing the podcast has been therapeutic for me and also therapeutic for the guests you know what I'm saying? That is such a great point, Marlon. Such a great you know point, man. You know, because, you know, yeah, I, I'm in that. 
I'm far from perfect, man. I'm I'm uh I'm pretty fucked up too, right? I'm, I'm traumatized and and we're this, all fucked up. All yeah, us. yeah, we're only human beings, man. And you know, this podcast has served as a, a ther- source of a form of therapy for myself too, man. Especially last year when I mean I've been podcasting now for two years, right? And then 2020 nice. hit. Yeah, but point being is. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's been great, man. Great journey thus far. And uh so the point being is that I 2020 with the COVID hit, you know, the quarantine, and you know, I was like, wow, what what the, a lot of, I, I didn't know what to, to do with myself, man. And I, so I kit, you know, I kicked into high gear on the podcast. You know, I kicked it into high gear and um you know just started doing episodes every week once a week just dropping episodes but it was great to it was my social outlet man it was my my source of uh of therapy if you will you know it was it was uh, I, had, I was having fun man and uh, i met so many wonderful people you know last year and uh but yeah podcasting i i, I totally concur man i'm right there with you on that you know but uh, what, what inspired you what made you start when? Well, you know, my, my, my story, you know, long story short, you know, I, I've always loved to perform. I've always loved to be in front of the camera. I've always, I've done some acting too, which we'll, you know, we'll talk about in a little bit. I've done, you know, I've always loved acting. I've always loved the, you know, the behind the scenes on how pr- things get produced, you know, whether it's a movie, whether it's a, a, a music video, whether it's a television show, I was always fascinated with that, you know, growing up, Going, you know, growing up here in Southern California, going to Universal Studios uh, was always a, a fascinating thing for me, man. Disneyland, you know, and just, you know, the whole the whole arts uh, scene, man, the world of entertainment. You know, I've always wanted to be in that world. Um, so that's why I got into acting. And, uh, you know, long story short, uh, got, didn't, didn't pursue it. Uh, and maybe about two years ago when I got into back 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 into podcasting or not back into podcast when i got into podcasting i should say um i at that 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 time that point in time i was like well i need to pursue what i want to pursue because i'm not getting any younger and something inside of me wanted to just give it another shot you know give it another shot and and i went what's the easiest way what's the most accessible way to kind of get back into that world uh for me it was podcasting you know because i literally did the podcast on my phone you know through anchor me too. And that's what i'm doing yeah yeah and it, if it was free and so i said you know what this is what i'm gonna do i do so i i started a podcast with called 90s galore nice we, yeah yeah so it was just focusing on um you know the episodes are still up on on uh, apple Podcasts and all that and uh on the platforms and Good uh, job, yeah just, just yeah thanks man we just focused on 90s uh bands musicians it, movies everything 90s man so that that's how i got into it man and it's been fun, man. J- January of 2019 was my first podcast. So like I said, man, just a little over two years now. And, uh, but here we are, man. And, uh, having a great conversation with Marlon D out of Oxnard, California, man. And speaking of Oxnard, Marlon, um, yeah, you, I, I, you know, I, I'm in the 805. I live in the 805. Now I, I grew up in uh, the IE, you know, the nice. 909, uh, so you know now I've I've lived in the 805 now for six years. Yeah. You know, um, talk to us a little bit about Oxnard, man. How, how was it like? How was it growing up there, man? For you, what was the uh, experience? Uh, did, was it hard for you? And you know, I I know there's a um, there's a, a little a, there's a small pocket of Filipinos over there, man. And I, I work in Oxnard too myself. Now, what a coincidence! You do? Yeah, yeah, and. Um, I work there and you know, I, I have some Filipino friends out there, man. And, but that was your us. name. What's your name? What's your, who's your Filipino friends out there? Oh, I man, we'll, them. <laughs> no, fine. We'll, fine. We'll talk about it. Yeah. We'll, okay. we'll talk about it off the air, man. Uh, okay. You know. So, but tell us about your story, man. I mean, what was it like? Cause there's a large Latin, large, uh, predominant Latino population there. Man. So yeah. what was it, what was it like for you? So I came in the I came in the U.S. 1995 from the Philippines straight to the Ox. So I felt like looking back in the mid 90s, late 90s, even early 2000s, bro. Like I grew up with Hispanics and Mexican. I grew up with Hispanics and Filipinos, mm-hmm. and um, the gang culture was definitely popping in Oxnard. You know, uh, the gang culture was pretty. And I'm not saying that I was a part of the gang culture, but 
people from the hood that I grew up with was, is, you know, back then, you know what I'm saying? Hold on, hold on. I'm going to take my cough drop. So, like, the gang culture was prevalent, but I think in the small city where there was a lot of Hispanics and Filipinos and back in the days, I felt like maybe people got into hip hop. There's a lot of talent coming from Oxnard. Okay. Like yes. shouts to Stone's Throw Records, you know, everything that they did and everything that the generation after them did, like, which was us, like there's the Stone's Throw generation and then the younger ones who was me and my, you know, it was a lot of us. I, I can't name everyone. There's a lot of us from Oxnard. <laughs> so from that generation to probably the most known Oxnard artist, Anderson Pack. So um, a lot of talent came from the city. And I think it's because it can be, it can be a boring city, but you got to make the most of it. Like it wasn't boring for me. It wasn't boring for me. My homies growing up, we had fun, you know what I'm saying? But in a small city, I can see how people would be bored. I can see how it's not L.A. It ain't L.A. It's not San Diego. It's Oxnard. It's, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. And um, small, tight-knit community, but I, there's, there's a lot of beauty in that. But there's a lot of... There's pros and cons, bro, in every hood. <laughs> there's pros and cons in every hood. So No doubt. It's a tight knit community, and that it has its pros and cons, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt, man. What, what, um, which area did you grow up in, man? Which section of Oxnard? Not too far from Channel Islands High School, South. You know what I'm saying? Oh. South Oxnard. Um, my family's still out there, you know. So, okay, yeah, dude. How often you come up, come back up? Um, I haven't been coming home as much lately, but I used, I used to go a lot, man. Like. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. a lot like did you go to anyway, ci i did i did oh okay who you, do, yo, yeah. who you know who you know from ci i, I we'll talk off the air man we'll talk all right we'll air. talk off the air we'll talk yeah you're, you're that hey that makes you a real that's when you know someone's a real g a hey, dog we'll talk off the air all right <laughs> i got you <laughs> Hey, I feel yeah. you. I feel you. You know, no, I, I love Oxnard, man. It's a great, uh, lots of great food out there, man. You got, the, you got Wainimi, you got the beaches are right there, man. It's a, uh, it's a cool, t- it's an interesting town, man. I had never really been to Oxnard before I started working there, you know, six years ago. And, uh, you know, I've since made a lot of friends, uh, a lot of, um, you know, built up a little network out there and it's for you, uh, but yeah, it, it's a cool, yeah. There's, you know, my feel, I got my Filipino homies out there, my the Filipino friends and, uh, you know, I was in the Navy Marlin. So, oh, okay. you know, yeah. And then even in the Navy, man, I had my Filipino friends and, and, um, I know the culture really well, man. I know the Filipino ah. culture really well. I, my, my brother married a Filipina and, uh, you know, I love her family and I got a really good friend who's Filipino. So, um, you know, what's up dog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. It's a uh, lo- I love the, the culture, man. Beautiful culture. And, and I, I love I've, the Hispanic culture too. You know, like growing up in the ox, Hispanics influence Filipinos. Filipinos influence Hispanics. We no grew doubt. up together. We grew up next to each other, man. Yeah. So, I, so every time my Hispanic brothers get ostracized or my my Hispanic brothers get, you know, they get treated bad. They get treated bad by this fucking president. Every time that Hispanics was like outcasted by the stupid, pre- you know, like I felt like every time that was happening, I felt like Filipinos were not too far off. Like, maybe he'll start dissing us next. Like, I felt like, you know, I I got my Hispanic brothers back, man. Fuck that. We're we're all minorities, bro. We're the same. We're the same in so many ways, fam. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The cultures have a lot of parallels, yeah. Yeah, we're the same people, man. Fuck (laughs) that. We love to eat, love to party, you know. Love to drink. Love to have fun, yeah. Love to talk shit. Dance and, you know, we don't love karaoke as much as you guys, but you know <laughs> oh man but you know it's uh it's a yeah it's a beautiful thing man it's a beautiful thing you know um so in, in going back to your podcast marlon i really enjoyed um charles charles uh charles collier uh, oh yeah 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 oh you, you you got that one that episode oh, yeah man. yeah Emmy, check it out he was Emmy a nominated for, what's that 
He started out as a break dancer. Yeah, exactly. B-Boy turned Emmy-nominated visual effects artist, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shouts yeah. to Charles, man. Great, yeah, great episode, man. Great episode, yeah. And thank uh, you. Absolutely, no, 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 man. And what? So, how often do you record a, an episode, man, on, on your podcast? I'm gonna be honest with you, though. I, I got the next 25 episodes already recorded and edited. I've just been, I've just been putting it out two or three times a week. So I'm pretty much ahead of schedule. I got That's great. Like 25 ready, good to go, and I'm still recording. But you know. I'm still recording, but I got 25 ready to go. Like, so that's probably going to make up season two. And then whatever I'm recording now, it's actually going to be season three, you know? So just a little bit ahead of time, you know, but I like it that way. So we're not procrastinating, you know? No doubt. No doubt. And and so you, you pretty much batched up your episodes, right? You- yeah. Just been recording on the phone. Sometimes I drive there in person, like, you know, sometimes I drive there in person because certain episodes, like, how do I say this? The elders, like the elders, you know, like, I don't, sometimes it's just easy to be in person, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt, man. So, so what, uh, so how long did it take you to, to record those 25 episodes that you, that you've already done? So everything that's coming out in season two. Everything that's coming out in season two was already recorded back in like November. <laughs> October, <laughs> November, November. Everything coming out now was back then. And wow, that's right, man. You you started in October, so you need like 25 episodes in, in three months, pretty much. I mean, it, I got about 27 episodes in three months and 25 gosh. more and 25 more in release. I've just I just booked a lot of interviews, you know, people people were more than willing to like give me their story. And I want to say thank you to every single guest that's donated their time, their stories and being vulnerable. What I love about the episodes is that they got vulnerable and they got real and they opened up and I was really humbled because dog, that's not easy. Oh, it's not easy telling your story out there for everybody else to hear and see. So like, I want to thank you to every single guest that helped build season one and every single guest that's building season two. And we are, it's, it's, it's a team effort, you know, like, and I'm sure bro, that you're grateful for every time you get a guest to come on too, you know? Oh man. Are you kidding me? Marlon? I, I, I you am know? super, yeah, I can't I can't describe that in words. Because they're they are the fifty percent of the show. The other fifty percent is you. No doubt, you know? man. And I'm sure it's a hundred percent you, but it wouldn't be a show without the guests, you know. Um, but me being on the other side, me starting a podcast, I know how it is to be on the other side of the fence, being the interview, the being the interviewer, you know, and. I get in there, dog. I try to ask for people's childhood and dynamics, family dynamics. I, I take it back to day one. I take it back to day one. Where are you from? What's your family like? How was that like? <laughs> like, um, bless you. Thank you. Like, I take it back to family dynamics because yeah. I think it dictates who you become, too, bro. That's a great point. That's a great point. I like that, man. I like that. That's uh, you, you go back to the formative years. Mm-hmm. Always, oh. all of them, all the guests. I take it back to that. You know, very cool, very cool. Yeah, I like that. I like that, man. That's a no, that's mm-hmm. a critical part of in someone's life. And I'm surprised, man. Everybody was willing to share. Nobody was no. Nobody was saying off limits. Everybody was willing to share, bro. Even the not so not so pretty parts, you know, of their of their childhood, you know, and that I was touched. I was really touched, man. <clears throat> means a lot to me yeah yeah that that's great man i, I like that marlon i like that I, that's uh like i said man that uh, your your family years your formative years your your youth play such a, a crucial role in the person you become right the adults it's, that you become now it's the most important like time i think the formative oh. years bro and exactly man mental health you know just tracing back our roots, you know, like, like starting to connect the dots from the past and the present. It's a, it's a game changer, you know, you know what I, I'm saying? 
It's a game really? changer. When you start connecting the past to your present, you you know, and that's when that's when healing starts, man. When you start accepting that, you know, like a lot of the self reflection and all that stuff, and because we don't want to pass that on to our children, you know, like just because you're hurt and you're in pain, don't fucking pass that on to your kids and and take it out on them, dog. You know, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. You're fucked up still, you know. Like you got to work on that. I got to work on that. You know, like. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I don't want to be. I don't want to be a bad father. I want to be a good dad. You know. No, it's a great point. Great point, man. Because yeah, as a father myself, uh, there's things that I I want to impart to my children and and avoid things that I you know certain things that that were you know and we we're all trying to improve our upon ourselves, right? You know, there's there's things my 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 parents love me dearly. I know that, and they, they weren't perfect. I'm not perfect as a father, you know, as a parent, as a father. Uh, but we just do our best, man. That's what we can do. We do our best, and uh, that's all we can do. Uh, but but yeah, I, but I, I like that, man. I can't wait to listen to more of your podcast, man, and and really get um, in tune with a lot of those episodes, man, that you're doing, uh, that you've done, and and so so you already have a total of fifty episodes. You got you said you haven't released twenty five or no? Yeah, is that what you is that what it comes down to? So I got about 27 episodes out on Spotify and all streaming services now. But like after that, the next 25 episodes for season two, it's not released yet, but it's already recorded and edited, you know, like I've just been kind of pacing it out, just p putting out two episodes a week, maybe three episodes, two episodes a week sometimes. Wow. Um, I got a, I got someone designing the graphic design for me. So as soon as he's done with the flyer, Mm -hmm. We just put it out, and um, the way I see it is that I'm just trying to put out content, but I'm not in the rut. It's not a race for me. It's just I'm just a workaholic dog, but I'm not trying to race with nobody. I'm 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 just worried about me. I'm not yeah. worried about nobody else, dog. I'm just worried about me and what I'm doing, and just trying to be a better person, bro. I'm trying to be. I'm just trying to get better, man. I'm not perfect either. Of course, of course, man. And you know, there's a um, you can't, yeah, you can't worry about things you have no control over, right? You know, we got enough to worry about throughout the day, bro. Exactly, exactly, man. I want to kind of get into your acting stuff, Marlon. Uh, what, what of uh, you mentioned it earlier, and yeah. how, how's that coming along, man? Are you, are you still actively pursuing the? The art or what, what, where are you at in the process with, with acting? So I was doing theater straight from 2018 to 2019. Um, but before that, even in high school, I was doing theater. Even in college, I did theater. Um, but so as far as theater is concerned, I was doing theater in Community Actors Theater in San Diego. And I did about maybe nine, ten, maybe eight, nine different plays within the past year and a half. And out of those nine plays, maybe I landed like four or five lead roles, you know? And um, when we were about to do my 10th play, the pandemic started and the whole thing got canceled. So we're still hoping that someday it'll open back up again and we're going to resume the play that I was on. Now, as far as film, I got a film out on Amazon Prime called The Year I Did Nothing, directed by Anna Barreto. And the movie really got out there as far as like indie film festivals all across the U.S. It got out there in the Philippines, Guam, uh, Philippine CNN, PBS Guam played it. And we had premieres all over the East Coast, New York, Seattle, um, uh, you know, North Carolina. And as far as pursuing it in 2021... I'm going to be honest, I haven't been auditioning for theater because there ain't none. Um, as far as film, <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm not pursuing auditioning on film, but me and the homies have been more busy writing screenplays. Is that right? Yeah, the homies are just trying to write screenplays. More, we're writing screenplays right now, trying to finish something, and... And yeah, we're, I mean, I still want to act. I still want to act, but I think my friends are getting into writing. That's inspiring me to act in it, you know, like, wow. 
So that's what we're trying to do right now, you know? So more on the screenplay writing tip. Wow, that's great, man. That's great. Yeah, acting is so fun, man. I I, I want to get back into acting. I would love to you get back to. into acting, man. You, you know, got at some, to. At some point, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, and, and that's what I'm hoping, man. Just to parlay this into bigger things, you know, and, and be able to kind of branch out. And uh, yeah. but but good for you, man. That's great. That's great. Uh, you, what was the name of that film that was on Amazon? The you year mentioned? I did nothing. Yeah, The Year I Did Nothing, directed by Anna Barreto, now available on Amazon Prime. And the DVDs can be ordered on Amazon.com. And it's also on Vimeo.com. It's a story about a Filipino family in the Philippines that's coming to America. And it shows the process on how people from the Philippines get legalized to come to the U.S. and how they get, how they file for petition and how can they get to the country, especially back in the 70s and the 80s. So the story was set in the 80s. And I had about maybe five or seven, five to seven lines in Tagalog. It wasn't even like the Philippine, it, it wasn't even the <laughs> English language. My lines was in Tagalog, you know? So Very cool, man. I, I got a chance to, um, to speak my native language. And uh, it was a good experience, man. But I really love theater. And people ask me all the time, what is it about theater that you love? And Mm -hmm. I said, it's similar to rapping. Like acting live is no different from rapping live. And I feel like, I think I'm comfortable. And by the way, dude, I know you see me kind of outgoing right now. I'm really a shy, introverted person. And people don't believe me. People say, the fuck you mean you're shy? You're a rap." You're a rapper and you act, but no, dog, I'm shy. But for some reason, I think performing on stage, even if it's acting, there's something comfortable in it for me. Like, Mm. it's what I've been doing all my life since I was, I've been rapping on stage since I was 15, man. And like, rapping for so many years, I know this sounds like a cliche, but rapping for so many years prepared me to act. Because I think to be a rapper, it requires a certain amount of acting. It requires mm-hmm. a certain amount of you have to act on stage when you're rapping, dog. Like, yeah, you're telling you know? your storytelling, right? Yeah, and I think acting live it's therapeutic. It's fun. You know how it is. Yeah. No, it's wow. It's fun. Uh, it's fun. It's it's challenging. It's outside my comfort zone, but. I really enjoyed it, dog. And I'm just waiting for this COVID shit to end. I swear to God, we're going to get back into it, fam. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. I can't wait. wait. I can't wait, bro. Mm, No doubt, man. No, that's great, man. That's great, Marlon. You know, um, before before we we, we start winding things down here, because we're coming up on time, I want to ask you, man, before... um, I forget. I don't want to forget. There's some questions I have for you, man. So if, if going back to being a hip hop artist, an MC, if what would you tell, what advice would you give to a young aspiring hip hop artist, MC that wants to get into the game? What would you tell that person? Study the history, respect the culture, respect the past, respect the present, uh, always be a fan be a dedicated fan because if you don't love this music, you're not going to last becoming an artist, fall in love with the music, stay in love making music. And that should be your number one goal. The business that's going to come, but don't be in a rush to get in the music business. Oh, trust me. It's going to come. The music business will come to you. Okay. Don't come to it. Develop your own hype, develop your own buzz, get hot, stay hot. That shit will come to you. So, wow. um, I've heard to, that before, you, man. You know what Something, I'm saying? The business will come to you. It's going to come to you. Don't be in a rush. Um, if you're in this to make money, like a quick money scheme, um, you're not going to last. <laughs> you may get the money. You may actually get the quick money scheme too, but you're not going to last as an artist. You're going to get the money though. But to be a lasting artist that's going to keep making albums, you're not. So um, I want you to think, are you, why are you getting in this? Just ask yourself that first. But uh, 
stick to your guns and do do what feels right and do what makes you happy you know what i'm saying if chasing yeah. money makes you happy then do that but if if making music makes you happy just because it makes you happy then do that you know no doubt man no doubt there you go man there you go it's, and, and and kind of um uh... Leading into my next question, can you kind of talk about some of those challenges and, and failures that you've experienced in, in your, uh, you know, in your life as an artist, as an MC? People are going to try to fuck you over. People are going to try to underpay you, undercut you. People are going to try to disrespect. People will try to um, extort you. Um, people will try to screw you. And anything shady you can think of, you're going to experience it in the music business. All right. So prepare. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. You can't you can't dodge it. You can't avoid it. I'm 36. Been there, done that. I I I, I paid my dues in my 20s. Not just not just making music, but I've had my share of being fucked over. That's what makes me an OG and a vet. Not because of my age, but because of my experience. Now, any 22 year old out there listening, 21, 22 year old listening to me, like I'm an old uncle, like. You're probably thinking, what the fuck does he know? He's an old guy. I know. I know you're looking at me like, what the fuck do I know? Because I'm an old guy. But that's the thing. I am an old guy. That's why I do know. So, like, exactly. I was I was 21, 22, cocky, stubborn once. You're gonna they're, they're gonna go through their face, double A. They're all gonna be cocky. They're 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 in their 20s, of course. Right. They're they're gonna be stubborn. They haven't been humbled yet, but it's another thing to pursue this in your thirties. Mm, yeah. It's one, it's one thing to pursue it in your twenties. That's cool. That's cute. That's cute. Kind of cute, but it's one thing to pursue it in your thirties. dog. Wow. Yeah. You're, you're seasoned, you're experienced. You're, um, yeah, that's a lot of experience you've got, man. It's two different belt. things, you know, be, we, you know, grown, we're a little grown and yeah. We we've already been fucked over, so we already know. We so now that we do know, what do you do now? Now that you do know, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's man. the game that we're on right now. Now I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what what are some of the, the the misconceptions about you know the MCs that you'd like to kind of debunk right now? That yeah. You want to kind of clarify that is that aren't true. Uh, rappers yes what is it about rappers that are true or that are not true yeah like what, what are some misconceptions of some some myths about rappers I, I think people think all we rap about is drugs violence and sex which is not true um 90 percent of us do rap about that but the <laughs> other 10 but the other 10 percent doesn't so um that's one and number two um they think that the music business is easy. It's not. And this is not for the weak. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you're going to face a lot of rejection. You're going to face a lot of disappointment. You're going to face a lot of, you're going to face a lot. And um, the only thing that's going to keep you in this is your love for the music. And that's it. Mm. Bottom line. Huh? It's, that's it. it if you, you don't know. love making music, you're not going to last. Like you have to love making music. No Absolutely. doubt, no doubt, man. What, um, what, what do you love about being in the studio, man? To create, just to um, experiment, just to um, be, just to release, just to express, um, just to um, to see the song from beginning to end yeah. come into fruition, from writing it to performing it, oh, from writing it to recording it to performing it. It's all three different things, you know. To be a well-rounded artist, it's one thing to write the rhyme and it's one thing to record it and execute it and recording it. And it's a whole other thing to perform that. So to all the MCs coming up out there, guess what? You got to work in all three. You got to work in your songwriting skills. You yeah. got to work in your recording skills and you got to work in your stage show. Mm -hmm. It's It's... And that's that's the work. That's the work. You gotta do the work. You gotta do it. Don't Can't expect cheat the process. You, you cannot. It's it's gonna show. Yep. 
Yeah, we talked about about it earlier, man. You know, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's a it's a grind, man. I, I give a hip, you know hip hop artist a lot of credit, man. A lot of respect because, like you said, it's not easy, man. It's not easy, and you got to be, you know, as you just spoke to. Yeah, you got to be performer. You got to be a businessman. You got to be. There's all these different components, all these different elements that go into it. That too, you got to be a businessman, right? You know? Which has which has nothing to do with writing rhymes, exactly. but for, unfortunately, it's a part of it, you know. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, Marlon, um, who it, it, who would you have dinner with, man? Who are three people you would love to have dinner with, either dead <laughs> or alive? Uh, it could be anybody, bro. Anybody. Who who would you love to? Three people. If you can narrow it down to three. Of course, Tupac. To keep one thing dead, if one dead Tupac, one that's alive, it's a tie between Nas or Eminem. You know, mm. I want to pick their brain. I want to pick their brain and how lyrical they got. Um, the third one, um, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I oh, on the acting tip, I would like to chop it up with Al Pacino, man. <sighs> You know, that's a great list, man. I've, just, just, just to learn from the icon, just to learn from the greats. You know, like I'm studying the greats all the time, and they're still the greatest, bro. Like, they're still the greatest. Like, like true legendary MCs never fall off, man. So, oh, man, I love Nas, man. That his first album alone is just incredible. Illmatic, dog. Um, it's you just gotta. Uh, Classic. Have you heard, classic. Have you heard the last one? Have you heard his last album, King's Disease? No, I haven't. Bro, when you hang up on me, you gotta pick Pete that. When did he release that one? Uh maybe a couple months ago. Oh, it's that new. okay. Just this year 2020 came out? Yes. It's called King's Disease. Yeah. Yo, when oh, you hear heard. that, when you hear that shit, he still sounds dope. He still sounds young. He sounds like he took care of his voice. He sounds like he took care of his voice. He still sounds Still sounds the same from Illmatic. Like Nas' wow. voice don't change, bro. Like it's incredible, bro. Like his style, the wittiness, the, the lyricism, it's still there. He's still sharp more than ever. And and we gotta admit, he's getting older too, man. If I mean, if if we're getting older, dog, he's getting older, but he sounds dope more than ever. And he sounds better than Jake. Like his last album sounds better than not the sounds better than Jay Z and Eminem's last album. I think. Gosh, incredible man. So yeah. yeah. What's your favorite Al Pacino movie? Man, it's a I tie love that between, guy. It's a tie between Carlitos Way. It's a tie between Carlitos Way and A Scent of a Woman. Oh my. A scent of a woman to me <sighs> is like that motherfucker's crazy, dog. But unreal, bro. But Carlito's way is top, probably top three in mafia movies. Like I would say, Godfather two is number one. Number two would be Goodfellas, and number three is Carlito's way. Carlito's way. Wow, that yeah. shit gets to you like fuck. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching that as a in 1993 as a 17-year-old kid, man, and uh gosh, just being just blown away, man. You know. It explores how us men, we can be stubborn. Mm, yeah. And yes. we did we don't listen to our gut and look what happens. Like mm. sometimes men are stubborn like we're yeah. stubborn and Carlitos way shows that on how stubborn we can be. And it's, it's the cause of your downfall. You didn't want to listen to your lady. Your lady told you to stop fucking with him. You didn't, you didn't listen. Mm. You know, you just, you, your stubborn ass did what you want to do. Look what happened. Yeah. I know, man. There's so many themes, uh, you know, prevalent in that movie and we could talk about, man, but yeah, he's my, probably my, my, I would say my favorite actor, man. And, so I love Son of a Woman. I was just talking about that uh, yesterday on an interview I did on a podcast. Uh, so, but yeah, man. Hey, Marlon, man, I, I want to thank you so much for, for joining us here on 
Profile Pod TV on the Social Nostra Network, man. Where before we go, man, where, where can the good people follow you on on your social media? Where can they connect with you? Yo, on Instagram, follow me at MD Lens. That's at MD L E N S. And for Facebook, you can add me on Marlon D Facebook page. And I also have a personal one, Marlon Dido. And then for Twitter at MC Marlon D. And for my catalog of mixtapes and albums from 2005 to 2021, it's mcmarlond.bandcamp.com. My album, Act Two, and my whole catalog since 2005 is now available on all digital stores, Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify. And my podcast is also on Spotify, MD Podcast. And my movie, The Year I Did Nothing, is on Amazon Prime. And thank you, man, so much for having Ooh. me. You're, you're, you're the shit. Oh, man. Gonna, okay. We're going to keep building, dog. I got to get you on the show. You let me know, brother. You let me know. Um, thank you for taking the time, man, for being here with us, man. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have Marlon D. As he just mentioned, there's many places to find him at because he's so busy, so artistic. And he's, I mean, there's he's all over the place. So check him out. Check out his album. Check out his movie. Check out his podcast, you know. Uh, but yeah, once again, thank you, Marlon, for being here with us, man. Um, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Marlon D., um, don't forget to subscribe to Profile Pod TV on Profile YouTube. Pod TV. That's right. Uh, on YouTube, uh, so, uh, check out Social Nostra. Subscribe to Social Nostra on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Subscribe on um, on Apple Podcasts. We're on on Pandora. We're on Spotify. All the major platforms. Um, follow me on Instagram at Profile Pod TV underscore Twitter at Profile Pod clubhouse at profile pod tv um so there, yeah i'm you can find me anywhere connect if you were like i said if you want to if you want to be on the show if you're an aspiring guest hit me up in the dms and uh we'll, we'll make something happen we'll make something happen but you got to bring your a game just like my man marlon d just did tonight um so once again man i, I want to thank everyone for being here youtube if you're listening on the audio i want to thank my man marlon d and um I want to thank the Social Nostra Network as well, man. So we will be back uh, next week, I think. Yeah, next week. Um, I want everybody to have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you on Instagram. We'll see you out there. And uh, for Marlon D, I'm Double A signing off this time. And always remember to take it easy. Much love. Thank you, Marlon. Thank you. Peace, peace. Peace, brother.